I'd like to introduce your new boss, Tanner. Hey there guys, welcome to another unboxing. Now it's a bit weird, I don't normally do a webcam one. Um, simply put, I don't have an actual camera on me, so I'm stuck using my webcam, so this unboxing is going to be a little bit different. But as I'm sure you all know, and if you don't know, why are you even on my channel, man? Um, it's Pokemon's 20th anniversary, and as a 21 year old, um, I feel like I've grown up so much alongside Pokemon that this, it means a lot to me. And I know it's kind of contradicting some of the stuff I said in my Digimon Let's Play, but that's just because, like, Pokemon has been, there, there's been no news. But we're getting some tomorrow, and by the way, watch for my reaction video, it will be a thing. Probably won't be anything near the hype of Mega Man, but uh, we don't know, and there have been kind of maybe some leaks, I don't know, but we're not going to talk about them because they could be wrong, they could be, people might not know about them, don't read the comments, they're probably down there, but regardless, man, Pokemon's 20th anniversary, I have played Pokemon for 20 years, easily, well, maybe not, because I started playing Pokemon with Gold and Silver, um, and then I went back and got Blue later, and then one day I went camping, met a boy there, and he's like, Oh, you have Pokemon Blue, can I play it? And he's like, I'm, or I'm like, sure. And then he's like, can I have it? And being a dumb kid, I was like, oh, sure. So I don't have Blue anymore. So that's a little sad. But I will be downloading Pokemon Yellow tomorrow. Because, man, Gen 1, broken as it is, still has a lot of nostalgia for me. Um, thankfully, I can go back and play my Gold Silver anytime. Not Crystal. I gave that to my friend's brother. I was not the smartest kid. Um, but no, like this is, this is, Pokemon's been such a thing with me. Um, for instance, I like, I'm not at my house right now. I'm at where I live for school. And one of the, like, oh God, it's so dusty. One of the first things I brought here was cause I got this with, oh my God, there's dust everywhere. Oh Jesus. Um, was like my, my, my giant Pokemon X and Y poster. Um, which I actually really like this side. I like this side a lot more than the other one, because it's cool, it's like an actual map and stuff. Um, and who knows, maybe it'll be important for the game that's announced tomorrow. We don't know. Um, but no, so Pokemon has been such a thing for me, and I thought, I'm gonna do a Pokemon 20th anniversary sort of special video. Not a Let's Play or anything, but something different. And one of the things is, they're releasing a new, well not really, a new set. They're basically re-releasing the classic Pokemon cards in like modern type. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but it's the re-releasing the original set of Pokemon cards, which again, I was more into the gold and silver ones, but like I did get some of the original Pokemon cards. Um, sadly, could not find any here in Canada, even though they're supposed to be out today. And like their sources are like, oh yeah, they're at Toys R Us, but Toys R Us doesn't do any of the Pokemon day stuff. So that's weird. But I decided to go out and just get Random card packs, uh, literally, I went to EB Games, which is our GameStop, and was like, Hey, pick out a Pokemon card pack for me. And she picked one out just on the color alone. So that's how random it is. And then I went to a mom and pop toy shop, which are, I love them so much. That's where, uh, there's going to be a lot of stories, and I apologize to this. Um, that's why it's I'm kind of doing this, because I have so many stories with Pokemon and Pokemon cards. Um, one day we were traveling out, I don't even remember where. As a family, I was young, I was playing, well, it was before Ruby and Sapphire, so I was young, um, and we were out traveling, and we found a store, uh, like, a, a real mom and pop toy store, and we went and got Pokemon cards there, and, like, this, the old lady at the counter, but I say old lady, because all I remember was that she was older than me, and she was actually talking to me about the Pokemon cards, and my mom was like, wow, it's kind of nice you're able to find someone who likes the stuff you do, and I was just like... That blew my mind. An adult who knew about a Smeargle card, and then I got like an unknown J, and I was terrified of unknown as a kid from the third movie, but because I got this card with this like cutely drawn unknown J, which I gotta say, one of my favorite things about the cards is just the art, and now that I'm more artistically inclined, I can't draw worth anything, but I'm more artistically inclined, um, it's like... I can appreciate the art, and I know the artists at least a bit, um, so that's cool. But no, it was like, that's, that's a memory for me. So I went to a mom and pop shop and got, I guess I should show. It's been like five minutes and we haven't actually looked at them. I got, uh, this. This is a three booster pack set with, uh, some Mega Evolution pins, which is nice, because, I mean, pins, I have like a, I have a big lanyard that I put all my pins on. Um, and they actually, they're really nice looking. It was a little expensive. It was $26.00 for 30 cards and 3 pins, and I, yeah, a little expensive, but you know what? 
I'm reliving my, my memories of a child, which is honestly... And sharing them with the world, that's another thing. Not only am I, like, reliving these memories, I'm not doing it alone, I get to share it. And I get a, I get a real joy out of sharing my childhood because for some reason I've always imagined, like, my childhood was so different because I'm, I was a Canadian in, like, the not exactly internet era where things were not exactly the same as they were in the, I don't even know. But I do love it, so that said, let's get unboxing. As I said, I also got one more, which we'll be looking at after um but for now let's open these up and take a look at at least the pins because oh geez i i hate it when you pull open the back of these and then it's like the back is just the back of the i hate that that's the worst let's see if we can try the other corner um so actually and i'm sure if you guys are are fans of my videos you'd know um i did win a pokemon card like super combo from tamashi hiroka she's a youtuber great youtuber please check her out her videos are actually way better than they I'm not gonna say have any right to be that's incredibly rude but they're really good um and so I won a Twitter contest with her and I won like a hundred some Pokemon cards and a uh, an extra pack I'm gonna need to use a pen to open it um I got two decks then an entire box of booster packs and it was just she she did a Twitter question where it was like uh contest time what's your favorite card in this set that, you know, and use it to tweet me, and then you get a chance to win it. And I just, I know nothing about the card game. Like, well, I mean, okay, I know the rules and stuff. I know how to play it, but, like, I don't know much. So I said, like, the fire energy, because I need it for my Groudon or whatever, right? Just, like, a super basic answer. And I won. So I got that 100 card pack at home that I actually haven't opened yet. Um, might one day. I kind of want to save it to see if it gets more money. So, okay, so we got the pins first. Let's take a look here. We got Mega Charizard Y. Oh, that's cool. On the back, there's actually... You're not going to be able to see this because of how terrible my camera is, but it's like all Pokemon... Pokeball emblazoned. That's good. I like that. Um, these are nice pins, actually. They're very well done. The outlines are a little thick, especially on, like, if you look at Mega Charizard X here. Actually, it doesn't look as bad in the camera. Actually, it looks really nice in the camera. In real life, because the way it shines, it looks like a weird, almost Smash bros -y outline with, like, it being super thick. I like that, though. Again, I'm a big... I'm part of the Smash Bros fandom, which results in me being a fan of anything that's in Smash Bros. It's so like, for instance, like that Mega Charizard or Mega Lucario here, whose design I do love, and I, oh, let's get in in the middle. That's good. I like that. His hair's down, which is interesting. You don't see that much. It's usually up a little bit more, but that's cool. Okay, so let's take a look at the card packs. I'll be opening them up one at a time, and uh, I'll show them, and if it's really cool, I'll see if I can get the art for like bigger screen don't know if i'll be able to i hope bulbapedia pulls out with me with this one you know um and i won't be showing off i know ashen shows off the um the codes to let you download just in case i get really back into pokemon cards i'm not gonna do that but uh yeah so let's take a look our first one here so i guess i should show you the xy breakthrough Featuring Mega Mewtwo X. Um, so I do know about break cards. Because I googled them because they were really interesting. They're like the Pokemon turning... Actually, I think... Is there a break Pokemon on one? Yes. Yeah, so like... Okay, so the Pokemon turns gold. And then you place the card sideways on it. And it doesn't replace the attacks. It just replaces the top of the card. Which is really cool. I love it when it like plays with the format like that. But let's, uh, as I said, open up the Mega Mewtwo X pack. Who knows? Maybe I'll get something super awesome. Um... So there's 10 cards in a pack. Oh, I just... Oh, the feeling of opening up a booster card pack. I haven't felt this in so long. Okay, so I'm gonna open... Look at them one at a time. So we got... Chesspin, whose attacks are... Nosh? Isn't that like... Oh yeah, it heals 20 damage, so literally he just pulls out Doritos and starts eating it. That's amazing. And then Seed Bomb. So his description is, Such a thick shell of wood covers its head and back that even a direct hit from a truck wouldn't phase it. A truck. Amazing. Uh, this art is by Megumi Mizutane. Oh, I really love her art. Or his, I'm not, it's probably a girl, it sounds like a female name. Like, it's very stylized-ish, kind of, but still retaining it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't I'm, I'm an art guy, you know, obviously. I'm not arty at all. Um, so that's good. I like that. Chess pin's good to have because you gotta have the basic ones. I'm actually gonna hold it upside down so because I, I saw the next one already, which was Piplup. Uh, with, uh, Water Splash, and it says, Because it's very proud, it hates accepting food from people. It's thick down, guards it from the cold. 
That's not the cool one. That's the same person. No, this one is Kanako Io. Okay. Not a fan of Piplup, honestly. It, spoilers. Gen 4 and I don't have the best relationship. And I played a lot of Gen 4. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, not like one of those people who just glossed over it. You know, like... No, I played pretty much every generation fully. Like, to completion and then some. And Gen 4 and I... Not the best relationship. I'm not the biggest fan. So next up we got... Uh, Noibat. Okay. And his one attack is Blot. Which, I don't know what that would mean to blot something. Like, is that an actual action? I'm not sure. Oh, it heals 10 damage, apparently. And does 10 damage. Oh my god, he's a vampire bat. That's kind of cool. Even a robust wrestler will become dizzy and unable to stand when exposed to its, to its 200,000 hertz ultrasonic waves. I have a feeling that that is actually impossible. Sort of like Macargo being hotter than the surface of the sun. But, you know what? Pokemon finds a way. Okay. So next up we got, I'm looking, not looking, not looking, we got another Chespin! It's a good thing I like Chespin. Not so much as Evolutions, but we got a second Chespin. Uh, this one by Koki Saito. And it says the quills on its head are usually soft, usually. Um, when it flexes them, the points become so hard and sharp, they can pierce rock. Okay, so he has Tree Climb, which apparently lets you actually go into your deck and search for grass energy, which seems actually really good. And does what does it say? Uh, put it in your hand. It Well, okay, it costs one grass energy, though, so I'm not sure about that. Maybe that might be good? I'm not sure. Actually, I don't think it is. And then Seed Bomb, you need a grass and two colorless for 30 damage, so... I don't know where these stand on how good they are. Personally, I don't think that sounds like good. He actually has decently high HP, though. Okay, next up we got... Oh, interesting. Well, I got my first fairy Pokemon card with Ralt, um, who I, as a kid I would always call Rattles. He has Mumble and Magical Shot. He wants to be a Maho Shoujo. And the description says... That is a... Honestly, this color of pink is so good. Like, it's not a girly pink, and I like that. It's almost like a, a scary, manly, dark pink. If that's a thing. Is that a thing? I think it's a thing. Um, it is highly attuned to the emotions of people and Pokemon. It's hide it hides if it senses hostility. That's cool. The feeling Pokemon. Aya Kusube. I like it. It's a good one. My first fairy card. Ever. Ever. That's incredible. Oh, we got um a foil card. Oh my god. That's good looking. Even though it's just a Remoraid, but it's a foil Remoraid, so you can see, I don't know if you can, oh, there you go. Look at the water design. Oh my god, the foil cards now look so much cooler. Well, the card itself is foil. The picture is not, which I'm fine with. Um, again, I think foil cards just are a thing. I don't think they denote super rarity or anything. Like, it's just, I think there's one foil per pack, if what I've read is correct. I could be wrong. So he has... Ion Pool, where you can discard any stadium card in play. That's actually pretty good if, if it's a stadium card you're, you don't want on the field. And Water Gun. Stadium cards are like the field cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, it's like, that's the best analogy I can think of if you don't know Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, I can't help you with Magic the Gathering. I was never that kind of guy. Um, using its dorsal fins as a suction pad, it clings to a Mantine's underside to scavenge for leftovers. I like that. I like the symbiosis of Pokemon. That's always cool. So yeah. Happy with a happy with it so far. Nothing amazing yet, but then again, we're only on our first one. Oh my god, well, well, speak of the devil. We got another foy. I okay, well, this one's a rare card. This one has a star. Um, so that means it's star rarity. Ooh, we have Zoroark, who is uh the actual card part is shiny now. So you can see sort of that's cool. Zoroark has always been a cool Pokemon. Um, and I have his card. So he has stand-in, which once during your turn before your attack, if your Pokemon is on your bench, you may switch this- Whoa, okay, so you can just switch him out from your bench instantly. That's actually really good. And his attack is Mind Jack. Yo That's weird, because he's not a psychic-y type, but okay. This attack does 30 more damage for each Pokemon of of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So that's basically like beat up from, from the games, which, eh, you know, I'll take it. 
and it says, uh, Bonds between these Pokemon are very strong. It protects the safety of its pack by tricking its opponents. That's a cool card. That one, I'm happy I got a, a you know, a foil Zoroark. Is this foil? I don't know the, the definition of foil or ultra foil or stuff. I'm just going to call it shiny. <laughs> it's not a shiny, though. That's the problem. That's a Pokemon thing. Okay, so that one's a really cool, actually, like, nice one. And after that, I'm going to just put them up to the camera without looking at them. We got a Piloswine. Aw, Piloswine is something that my sister always loved uh, from because we would play... Pokemon Coliseum a lot as a kid, uh, or I would play, and my sister would watch. Like, I'd play it over and over, then transfer them to uh, Ruby and Sapphire. Um, and every time I would get the Shadow Snubble, uh, my sister would call it Snuffeet. And so now she has, she actually, I got her a plush swine up called Snuffeet. And uh, no, she likes Pilo Swine as well. Doesn't like Memo Swine. Understandable. But there he is. You know, he has a uh, push down and gathering footsteps. And they do, respectively, push down, uh, your opponent switches his or her active Pokemon with one on the bench. That's pretty good. You can force that, I guess. And then gathering footsteps, this attack does 10 more damage for each colorless energy in the retreat costs of your Piloswine, Mamoswine, and Spinub. Wait, what? That's weird. For each star in the retreat cost. I don't get that. That's probably, that's a weird one, because that, does that mean, like, you need to get count up all of your swine up pilo swine and mammal swine add up their retreat costs and then the more you have the more damage i mean that's kind of interesting that's weird though um because the long hair all over its body obscures its sight it just ch keeps charging repeatedly but he's if you look he's actually on like a fake snow place because there's snow machines in the background it's not even real snow like geez man why would you bring a pilo swine to a place with fake snow that's just cruel don't be cruel, baby, that's uncool. Oh, I totally just looked at the next two, because I'm a fool. Uh, thankfully, I already have this one, but it's Rainbow Energy, which, uh, is this the one that actually generates an energy every turn? This card provides colorless energy. While in play, this card provides uh, every type of energy, but only provides one at a time. When you attach this card from your hand to one of your Pokemon, oh, that's new! But I don't- did they do that before where you actually had to put one damage counter on them to have it work as a generic- like one energy per turn? Because that's new. I had a colorless energy before and it actually looked really cooler than that. It was like full body art and would have like- it looked almost like a molecule. It was really cool. Um, would it do that before where it had one damage on each one? That's interesting. That balances it at least. I always thought it would be a good card as a kid. Again, I never played the game as a kid much, but like I knew the rules at least. And finally, uh, we have Brixen, uh, confirmed for Pokken, which I'm happy about. I know some people aren't. I am. I think she's a good choice. Or he, depending on what it is. You know, it's good. It could be either. Um, it has Flamethrower, and when the twig is plucked from its tail, friction sets it alight. The flame is used to send signals to its allies. That's good. Really nice flames on that, though. I mean, look at that. Look at the flames there. That's good. I like that. And you know what? I'm starting to get more and more of the starters. That's good. Then, of course, we get the... Uh, the code for the card, which I'm not going to show, because again, I might want it sometime in the future. But for now, we're going to move on to the Mega Mewtwo Y pack, who, why would we open this? Because it's Mega Mewtwo, huh? Oh my god. So I guess I, uh, I guess I like Chespin or something. I don't know, man. Maybe I really like Chespin. Okay, we've seen that one. He noshed again. If this is the same card pack again, I will be mad. Okay, no, this one's new. Oh, perfect! So we got Zoroark. Now, of course, we have Zorua. Zorua. That's how you pronounce it. Um, who has whiny voice and dark edge, which is the edgiest thing since Shadow the Hedgehog. That's a really nice art. Look at that. That's adorable. It's nice that you have like a dark type Pokemon, or in Japan, an evil type Pokemon, uh, who is looking so cute and licking its master's face. That's- oh, I dropped the card. That's no longer cute anymore. Um, it's actually by Hitoshi Ara or Ariga. Isn't he the guy who did the Mega Man comic? I'm- or I'm, I might be confused with another Ariga. Um, to protect themselves from danger, they hide their true identities by transforming into people and Pokemon. I guess it means that this Zorua is not in danger. It's having a good day. Also, choose a random card from your opponent's hand, and your opponent reveals that card and shuffles it into his or deck. Okay. That feels a little situational, like, unless you know that there's something there. 
Um, next up we got, again, I'm not gonna look till I show it at the camera. Oh, Froakie! Yo, Froakie! Okay, Froakie, legit, my favorite Pokemon from X and Y. Um, well, I mean, the Froakie line, really. Um, Greninja is super cool. But, like, no, as soon as I saw Froakie, I'm like, Froakie, you and I are going together from day one. You know, I actually called him Benjamin Froakland. I still think he looks like Benjamin Franklin. Little glasses, although now they look more like, you know, bubbles on his nose, which they're supposed to be. And then he has, like, the hair. Oh, and in the background, there's, um... Frogadier. That's cool. It's like Frogadier's training Froakie. Oh, I love that. All he has is Pound, though, so he has a lot of training to do, obviously. It protects its skin by covering its body in delicate bubbles. Beneath its happy-go-lucky air, it keeps a watchful eye on its surroundings. I like that. That's good. For I mean, I'm not going to be disappointed anyways, because it's like I don't play the games much, so... I'm just happy to look at the art, the cards, all that stuff. Next up, we got... a uh, Snover! Interesting, I wonder if there's a Grass-type Snover card as well, because there is no Ice Pokemon card, which is weird. It has always been weird to me. It has Powder Snow and Double Smash. Uh, in the spring, it grows berries with its texture of frozen treats under... Wait, what? In the spring, it grows berries with the texture of frozen treats around its body. Okay, so the berries have the texture of frozen sweets. I was very confused. I thought his belly had the texture of frozen sweets. I like Snover. I don't know. Something about, like, Snover and Obama Snow and Mega Obama Snow, they're, like, very, um... I live in Canada. I was gonna say reassuring and homely, and that's the legitimate truth. I have trees everywhere that I'm like, that is a Obama Snow right there. And then people look at me and they're like, are you okay? You know? So, that's okay. Next up we have... Cacnea! Oh my god! I think I have this card before. Or at least something similar. But I love these type. That is a Cacnea figure in, like, real world. I love that. That is so good, you know? Like, as a kid, I, w I had a couple cards that were, like, clay done and a couple that were, like, similar to this. And that always blew my mind. Because as a kid, it was like, when I got them, I feel like I should have not liked them. Because it's like, why does this one look different? It's not hand-drawn. But, like, no, I'd get them. And I'm like, no, I like this, you know? So it says uh, he has swagger. Which does, you know, exactly what it is. Except it's if heads discards an energy instead of making them confused. Um, and it does damage. So literally nothing like Swagger, I take it back. It prefers harsh environments such as deserts. It can survive on 30 days on water stored in its body. I like Kecnia. Kecnia is a good grass type, which you don't get often. Most grass types I'm, I'm iffy on, but I like it, you know, being a cactus. We got, oh, F yes, Sea King! That's my second shiny water type, though. Very good, because Sea King, of course, being an original, original 150, people love Sea King. Um, and he's a meme. Gotta love memes. He has Soaking Horn, which, uh, if this Pokemon was healed during this turn, it does 80 more damage. Which is incredible, considering it only does 10 and takes 1 energy. That could be really good if you have a potion or something. Um, I wonder if you- you can't heal it, though, if it doesn't have damage. Oh, and then his other attack does 10 damage to itself for the cost of one colorless energy and 40. That is... I feel like this card is really good. Like, I don't know, is it just me? The fact that it can do damage to itself, only like minimal damage, and then from that, you can use a card to heal it and then have it attack? That seems incredible. That seems... and then it does 90 damage for one water. That could kill another Seeking. That's incredible. That's good. Um, did I read its thing? It makes its nest by hollowing out boulders in a stream with its horns. It defends its eggs with its life. See, that's interesting because, like, I- Sea King is just, like, like, such a fish Pokemon. Like, there's nothing to it. It's just a koi with a- with a horn. Which, admittedly, now that I'm looking at it objectively, no nostalgia is a really bad design. But you know what? That's fine. I feel like we just need to know more about them. And that, for example, is interesting to know. I love listening to- you can make an actual nature docu- I would watch a nature documentary on Pokemon. Like, just a- a-, a the planet Earth style thing on Pokemon, using CG models or something, that'd be cool. Next up we got, uh, Marowak, who- another 151. Sharpshooting and Bone Windmill, that's what they used to call me in university. Um, Sharpshooting does 30 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, but don't apply weaknesses. So that's pretty good. 
Um, and Bone Windmill, if your opponent's active Pokemon is in Pokemon EX, which is like a, a, a better Pokemon, um, switch this one with one of your bench Pokemon. Interesting. So wait a sec. Who's that up there? Is that a Zoroark? I think that might be, because if you look in the art, he's looking up at something up there. Like, he sees something in the shadow up there. I think that's a Zoroark. That's cool. I wonder if I could look at another card and actually see them, like, match up. I love that. Continuity in Pokemon cards is one of my favorite things. Right, so next up we got... Oh my god, it's Vanillish! Vanillish, a lot of people hate the ice cream line. I love the ice cream Pokemon. Unironically, completely unironically, they are adorable, they're really well designed, they're actually really good Pokemon too, and Vanillish is just the second form, right behind Vanillite and then Vanillux. So, um, Ice Edge and Icy Wind, a lot of edge we're talking about. Um, pretty decent, I guess. It's an uncommon. Snowy Mountains are this Pokemon's habitat. During an ancient age, they moved to southern areas. So actually, there's 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 art showing, like, the vanilla sh and vanillite. The white stuff is actually just a coating. You can take that off, and under there is a hard head. Like, it's, it's creepy. I like it. That's good, you know? So it's not actually ice cream. It just makes itself look like ice cream, which... I feel some people might not like even more. Um, okay, next up we got... Oh, I need to actually look at it. An Assault Vest! A Tactical Assault Vest. Okay, you know what? Why not? Why not give your Pokémon military great armor? Um, let's see here. Any attack done to this Pokémon is... Uh, any damage done to this po to the Pokémon... This card is... Wait, what? Okay, any damage done to the Pokemon this card is attached to from your opponent's Pokemon that have any special energy attached to them, its weakness is reduced by 40. Okay, that's very confusing, but it's just tactical armor and you basically equip it as an item, as you would in Pokemon. Um, and yeah, you can equip one Pokemon tool to your Pokemon that doesn't have a Pokemon tool on it, and you can play as many item cards as you like during your attack. Or no, before your attack during your turn. That I think is new. I think trainer cards are left at 1, but item cards are now infinite. I feel like they split them. I could be wrong about that. Oh, and of course we got another pile of swine. Same one. Um, there are going to be there are going to be crossovers. I mean, that's fine. Um, finally for the uh, breakthrough set, we got uh, the break Zoroark, which I hope I get. He's cool. I want a break card. I don't think I'm going to get it, but if I do, I'll be super hype. Let's see here. Uh, we gotta open it the way we're supposed to, which is through the opening at the top. There we go. And of course, I see the first card, and who would it be? But not a chess spin, thankfully. I'm gonna just It's another Zorua. Different one, at least. Moonless Madness. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. That's interesting. And Dark Edge once more. The description for this one is uh, to protect themselves from danger. Oh, it's the same one. So it's just the same card, basically, but with a uh, different attack and different art. I'll take it. Next up, we have another Routes, but this one is Psychic. That's interesting. I always like how they have some cards that are one type or the other, if you will. That kind of opens up some interesting, like, type-changing potential. That's cool. He has Nap, which heals just 30 damage, and Smack. So he's basically a baby. Or a cat. Um... That's cute art. Oh my god, look at that. That's adorable. That is straight up adorable. Um, it is highly attuned to the emotion. Okay, we read that one already. Not all of them have different ones, it seems. Only a few. Next up, we got... Oh, Panpour! I love Gen 5. But the monkeys are probably my least favorite part. They are just... I feel boring design-wise. But you know what? Whatever. It's, it's Pampor, and you know what, at, at the start of, of Black and White 1, every time I play it, I need to get them, because there's no way I'll you know, beat the first gym without them. Uh, Fury swipes, and his description says, The water stored inside the tuft on its head is full of nutrients. Plants that receive its water grow large. So, like, I'm sure Pampor and Pansage have a wonderful relationship. Well, you know, Panseer is kind of the weird brother we don't talk about who may light stuff on fire for fun. 
Oh, speaking of the Vanillux and Vanilla, uh, Vanilla-ish, we got Vanillite here, who has Stiffen, which during your opponent's next turn, any damage done to this Pokemon is reduced by 20. Okay. And Icy Snow. What's it say for him? This Pokemon formed from icicles bathed in energy from the morning sun. It sleeps in buried snow. Whoa, okay, are we getting into some? That's... So it was born when a random icicle bathed in energy from the morning sun. Okay, so I hatched these guys from eggs. <laughs> I'm guessing that's one of the things where it's like the, the myth, if you will, like... They talk about like, oh yeah, the world is on a Torterra's back, you know, stuff like that. Or, you know, like this Pokemon is said to be God, if you will. Um, just like, I feel like that one is one of the myth ones rather than a fact. Because you can't mix them up. It's like, that's, you can't just say yes, anytime an icicle is hit by sunlight, it turns into a Vanillite. Because like... That, my god, we would be swimming in them up here, which would be terrifying yet adorable. And I would probably have seven. Okay, so next up we got, come on, break cards, break cards, what we got? Oh, speaking of Panseer, with Fury Swipes again, and is he doing a little Hadoken? Or is that a Yoga Flame? Regardless, it's a Street Fighter move. Um, the Pokemon lives in caves and volcanoes. The fire within the tuft on its head can reach 600 degrees Fahrenheit. That is, like, double, almost double what you need for a pizza. You could put two pizzas in there. You could put a pizza pop in there and have it done in five minutes. Okay, no, I take it back. Panseer might be the most helpful of the monkeys, now that I'm thinking about it. Right, next we got... Ooh, Staravia. Man, I remember back when, um... Yeah, Staravia is Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Um, which again, I said I don't have the best relationship with, but I have memories with, of course. And I remember seeing Staravia. It was like the first Pokemon I'm pretty sure I saw when, um... Because I was at my friend's house, and they were debuting the anime of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. And like the first thing you see, I'm pretty sure, is a bunch of Staravia flying by. And one of my one of my friend and I saw it because I don't think we knew it was a marathon of like Diamond and Pearl episodes. We started freaking out because Diamond and Pearl wasn't coming out for a long time, right? So we're like, oh my god, Staravia, that's a new Pokemon, and we were freaking out. And it was the best. I love those memories. Right? I think I think I saw the next one's trainer card. No, Parasect. And he is in a scientist lab full of evil energy for Mega Man 8. Okay. Or colorful spores. No, it's okay. Um, man, Parasect is one of the scariest Pokemon when you know its backstory. It's downright terrifying. So colorful spores, choose three of your Pokemon for each of those Pokemon. Search your deck for a different type of basic energy and attach to that Pokemon. Shuffle your deck afterwards. Interesting. And x -Scissor. Um, which may do 30 extra damage if you flip a coin. The larger the mushroom on its back grows, the stronger the mushroom spores it scatters. I wonder why. Oh, you know, it's just taking over this poor bug's body. The dark stuff of Pokemon gets surprisingly dark. And then we got Go-Goat. Go-Go-Go-Goat. I like Go-Goat. It's not a good Pokemon, but it's I like its design and everything. It looks like a Pokemon. Simple as that. Overgrow and Horn Leech. Or Overrun. Overrun does 30 damage to your opponent's benched Pokemon. So you do 10 damage to the Pokemon, then 30 damage to the one past it. That's actually kind of cool. And Horn Leech does 90 damage and then heals it 30. They inhabit mountainous regions. The leader of its herd is dedicated by or decided by a battle of clashing horns. That's cool. I don't have the Skiddo to evolve it, but hey, that's fine, man. Second last one, we got a... Oh, dude! Oh, my God. There he is. Quilava, who, uh, again, I was a very, very big fan of Pokemon uh, Gold and Silver. Gold, I started with Croconaw, and then I got Silver, and I picked Quilava. Okay, well, I, I say I got Croconaw, but, like, I have most of my memories with Croconaw, because that's where I stopped in Gold. And then I started with a uh, Cyndaquil in my Silver, which I got very, you know, quickly after... And, um, man, dude, that, I named him Volcano, and he took me through the entire game, and that was, like, the first game I beat as a kid, 
That was intense. Quilava is my bro. I love, love Quilava. He is my good friend. Um, that killed the camera's quality for a second there. He has Mini Eruption. That's perfect because I named mine Volcano because it's called it's the Volcano Pokemon. So I named it Volcano. I thought I was being incredibly witty. Um, which does discard the top card of your deck. If it's an energy card, it does 30 more damage. That's kind of cool. Uh, be careful when it turns its back during battle. It means that it will attack with the fire on its back. Good to know. Whenever I run into one. Oh, it's like a skunk. Oh my god, it's a fire skunk. That's kind of cool. Last one, we got a... Oh my goodness, it's Wobbuffet. And I'm pretty sure that exact thing happened in the anime where he just jumps up and uses a mirror coat. Wobbuffet, for those of you who don't know, is a banned Pokemon in competitive play. Think about that for a sec. He is on the tier of banned list that's also with like... All like the god Pokemon, if you will. He is insane. He has Mirror Barrier, which takes one colorless energy. Flip a coin if heads prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks the next turn. And then he has, surprisingly, breaking the entire Pokemon canon, he actually has an attack called Rolling Tackle, where he will just roll into you. That's cool. To keep its pitch black tail hidden, it quietly lives in the darkness. It is never the first to attack. That is weird because this one can always it can attack first. So if, there, if you don't know, um, Wobbuffet itself is a just an inflatable thing. The tail is the actual Wobbuffet. That is the real uh, the real Wobbuffet, and the rest of the part is a giant inflatable thing. Also, he's based off a of comedian, right? So. That was the uh, the initial 30 that I got. A good set. I mean, it's... Uh, I was funny. I was expecting a lot more. I was hoping for maybe like one really rare one per pack. But, you know, we got we got half a deck here. Um, and pretty... I mean, surprisingly, like no energy cards. We got one. That's really surprising. Where do you get energy cards then? Like, I remember as a kid, I would get like five energy to like four Pokemon. And that is not the case here. So now we got a blister pack, which, I mean, you could probably tell if it wasn't covered, but it's actually Mega Caesar there, and I love Mega Caesar because uh, Mega Caesar, uh, I actually, one of my first shinies that I got in X and Y, uh, before there was shiny hacking going on a lot, was a, uh, was a Caesar who I actually got traded uh, in the GTS, and this, again, this was before the Pokemon, um, Pokebank, so you couldn't transfer over your Pokemon, and it was before the, um, like, the hacking really occurred, so I know it's legit, and that makes me happy. Um, but for the most part, you know, it's good. And this is a blister pack, so it's, I, there's something so aesthetically pleasing about a cardboard sort of sleeve thing. I don't know what these things are for, because these are, like, corrugated here. It's kind of a cool thing, and I got this one, as I said, at EB Games, which, uh, is our GameStop, um, and I told the story. Oh, I guess it's that you- oh, oh, so you peel these open. Oh my god, this thing is aesthetic- like, not aesthetically, but tactically nice to open. So, you open this up. Oh, there you go. There's his face there. So you open it up there, and then you just like- Oh my god, it's actually so nice to open. Okay, so then you just like slide out the card pack, I guess. And uh, now this one is Breakpoint. The other one was Breakthrough, if I recall. Yeah, so these were Breakthrough. This one is Bri- This one is Breakpoint, which I think is the next one? I could be wrong on that, um, but we'll have to see. Let's give him an open and see what it is. And again, I will try to not look at the bottom one. Okay, so I didn't this time, so let's go completely blind. The first one we're gonna get, will it be a super legendary? It is! Oh, it's Phantom. I like Phantom. He's cute. He's a good Pokemon. Especially his, his evolved form, Trevenant, I actually really like. I like the X and Y designs for Pokemon, which is weird, because I'm honestly not the biggest fan of X and Y, but the Pokemon themselves are awesome. And his move is Ascension. Search your deck for a card that evolves from this Pokemon and put it- Wow. His attack is literally just instantly evolve me. Just from- From your deck, evolve him. For one energy. That's- surprising.
surprise... I don't know, is that... I, I guess it depends on what Trevenant card you have, but this means any Trevenant, if it's good, it'll be really good, because it's an instant right evolution. According to old tales, these Pokemon are stumps possessed by the spirits of children who died while lost in the forest. So yeah, got a little bit of Ocarina of Time in there. Um, right, so next we got... Delkitty! Glam Meow! Glam Meow, I was wrong. Uh, act Cute and Scratch, and Act Cute does... Your opponent puts a card from his, uh, his or her hand on the bottom of his or her deck. Scratch is Scratch, does 20 damage. When it's happy, Glamio demonstrates beautiful movements of a tail like a dancing ribbon. Gotta say, never been a fan of Glamio, or it's evolved form, Perugly. Out of all the cat Pokemon, it's probably the one that A, I forget about the most. Cause Skitty, oh my god, you see how cute Skitty is? And like, Lypurd is cool. Um, you know, Glamio, never been a fan, gonna be honest. Give that to my sister, I think she likes Glamio. Maybe? I'm not sure. Next up after that we got... Gibble! Y'all, oh, Gibble. Look at its attack, it's never enough. Just card a card from your hand if you do draw two cards. Wow, so you can just use that attack, don't discard it, wait. Don't discard from your hand and then just don't draw two. That's weird. Um, Gibble's awesome. Like again, um, as I said, I'm not the biggest fan of Gen 4 and its Pokemon designs and stuff, but Gibble's line is one of the coolest. A land shark, like, need you say more? Um, and its thing says, It nests in small, horizontal holes in cave walls. It pounces to catch prey that's stray too close. That's cute. I like Gibble a lot. Right, so next up we got... Oh! It's Chikorita. Who also can suck blood. Okay. So... If you follow me on Twitter, you know I'm infamous for always saying people who like Chikorita are wrong. I'm gonna be honest. People who like Chikorita are quite wrong. Um, I've never liked Chikorita. Every time I play the game, it's like, I don't like Chikorita. It uses the leaf on its head to determine the temperature and humidity it loves to sunbathe. It is just a green blob. The card art, on the other hand, is interesting. What does that mean? Why is there a portal to a city? Is that a portal to perhaps the Chikorita is from the X, like the, the old Pokemon dimension, and then the um, Fennekin is there from the like X and Y dimension? Because spoilers for the games, by the way, um, X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire take place in an entirely different universe from every game before it, which is probably one of my favorite plot points of the XY Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire games so far cuz that uh, that was that was a twist no one saw coming. Oh, uh, we got Timpoles. Look at look at these. Wait, what emotion do they have? Okay, I I am usually good at telling emotions. I have genuinely no idea what emotion these guys are showing. But it's okay cuz they can get loud. They're like the best DJs, and they have round, which is like their signature move. Um, by vibrating their cheeks, it emits sound waves incom- Im- Wait, imperceivable to humans. It uses the rhythm of these sounds to talk. Interesting. Tim Pool's cool. I like his line. Right, so we're coming down to the end. So far, no super amazing rare ones, and we got a shiny C dot, which is- I am 100% sure this is my third C dot foil. I don't know why every C dot card I get is a foil, but you know what? Hey, that's fine. There's C dot doing his thing. You go C dot. I actually really love C dot's design. He's such like a nothing Pokemon because he's just a, like a, a, an acorn with feet, but I feel like he's adorable and uh, mostly because he reminds me a lot of Pokemon Coliseum and XD. Mostly Coliseum because you fight. A number of them in there and uh man those games i feel so much nostalgia for uh he has ram which does 10. uh when it dangles from a tree branch it looks like an acorn it enjoys scaring other pokemon well that's kind of rude don't do that protect them they're my babies next up we got Ooh, luxray bite and snarl there it's good card art and it says, uh, Luxray's abilities to see through objects come in handy when it's scouting for danger. It has X-ray vision, apparently. You know what? Big Pokemon lore fan here. 
first time I've heard that. It can see right through objects. So, ladies, be careful. I don't know where I'm going with this. That was, that's, yeah, that's, whoo, right. We got uh, Pokemon Catcher. Flip a coin. If head switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with his or her active one. So it's not one that lets you get their card. It's one that lets you just switch Pokemon. Which isn't really a Pokemon Catcher. It's more of a Pokemon Switcher. But I feel like that... I'm 100% sure that's already another card. Two left. I'm just going to put them up both at once in case we get one. No, I'm not going to do that. Mawile. I like Mawile. It has tight jaw. Flip a coin of heads. Okay. And Carnivorous Chomp. Okay, sure. That's uh, that's an interesting attack name. Um, attached to its head, a huge set of jaws formed by horns. It can chew through iron beams. I always, I never thought of it as horns. I guess it could be horns. Sure, I'll take it. Last card. What's it gonna be? Be something super rare. Be something super awesome. And it's, if it's Chessman, I swear to God. Splash energy. Well, there's my energy I was asking for. So Splash Energy, this can only be attached to water Pokemon. This card provides water energy only while this card is attached to water Pokemon. If the water energy is knocked... If the water Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from your opponent's attack, put that Pokemon into your hand. Discard... Okay. Interesting. So not only does it give you one water energy while attached to your Pokemon, it also will save them once, and then this card gets discarded. That's kind of cool. Well, sad to say we did not get anything super crazy rare. In fact, this deck that we got here is useless. But I will put it into my pantheon of cards, which I have a big one of, don't get me wrong. Like, I bought, I have a lot of Pokemon cards from my childhood, which I'm sure 90% of them are still compatible with today. So, um, I know some of them aren't, though. There's some that I know distinctively they said straight up, like, old, I think old trainer cards, some of them don't work, um, because they're banned. Um, so, thank you for watching my look at this, like, 40-minute video on, um, my Pokemon cards I played with as a kid and my memories. Um, I guess one other memory that I didn't talk about was the fact that when I went to go see Pokemon the first movie in theaters, or no, it was Pokemon 2000, because they were talking about... No, it was Pokemon the first movie. Because I went to Pokemon 2000, I didn't, they, in Canada, didn't give out the, the cards either, which made me sad. That or was either a discount theater, I'm not sure, but regardless, I didn't get a Mew card, and that made me really sad. Um, my friends did, though, and that got me angry. Um, as a kid, I was at very basic emotions. Um, but I went to Pokemon, Pokemon the first movie in theaters, and I remember they said, I think they had a promotion where it's like, go and get a Mewtwo card, like an actual Mewtwo card, not like the, the, the Mew card or whatever. Um, and they're like, go and get a Mewtwo card, and I remember seeing that on TV. Now, remember, I watched American TV as a kid, so we didn't have that promotion going on in Canada. So when I went there, I was super sad, you know, I mean, I loved the movie, and my dad was, my dad watched it with me, and like, shoutouts to my dad for actually going to see Pokemon the first movie with me, and I remember he even enjoyed it a bit. Like, I, then again, that could just be me being a really little kid. Um, and I remember then at the end when we, um, when I didn't get the, the card pack, he went out and got me a card pack anyways to say, just in case you didn't get a card pack, here you go. And I got a Mewtwo card in there and like, I'm going to cry. Oh my God. That just meant a lot to me. I love you, Pokemon, man. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Pokemon's good. 20th anniversary. Looking forward to the reveals tomorrow. Watch for my reaction video, which probably might be coming a bit late, considering the fact that uh, I have a, a test tomorrow, but uh, I'll be recording it in the morning, editing it probably in the evening. Um, thank you all for watching. I didn't cry. I didn't. Um, and happy Pokemoning. Have fun. See you guys later. Ciao.